Hello, folks, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam Hancock. I'll be your host once again. And today we sit here, I believe, on December 10th, and we have two weeks till Christmas. We're almost to the new year. And now is the time for 2024 to talk favorites. If you are looking to relocate next year and you're probably not going to make it in the rest of this year, then we need to talk about what's on the horizon for you. Both when it comes to resale homes and new construction, I have a list of five of each, why I like them, what they mean to you, what they mean to the area as a whole. I think they're great examples of what you can do next, even if it's not with that individual neighborhood. So that's what we're going to do today. I hope you find a lot of value in it. If you do, make sure you grab our 2024 brand newly released downloadable flipbook guide to Sarasota and Manatee County. Uh, I just updated it and it is live in the description box below and also a link on this video. So grab that. And then lastly, I have also separated the Tampa Bay area from this channel. So I'm going to give it the focus it deserves. So next year, a ton of content. It's called the Tampa Florida Relocation Guide. I will link that to here if I remember as well. So make sure you also give that a follow if you're trying to compare and contrast these two. Without further ado, let's hop in and discuss today's topic. Okay, let's kick it off with new construction. And number one on my list, no particular order, I'm going with the community called Brightmore, which just released by Madame Homes in Welland Park. So a 55 and up community in South Venice slash Western Northport put out by Madame Homes is something that satiates a lot of needs that no one's doing right now in this area. There's not a Dell Webb down there that's new construction. There's not a 55 and up that has been shoved into that landscape of the 9 to 11 other neighborhoods there. And for those reasons, as well as Madame being the builder, I think this might be one of the fastest selling, if not the fastest selling community that exists. Um, in the next three to six months. It's going to go gangbusters. It's got amenities in a area that amenities were kind of not, a lot of the Welland Park new stuff in the Playmore district was zero or no amenities with HOAs. And they were pointing at the town as being the amenity. Well, they're going the opposite direction with this one. It adds a 55 and up layer in a town that is built to do that. Any of the walkability, the golf cart friendliness, it's going to go crazy. I think it's going to, it would be an opportunity that I would take very, very seriously. And then Madame e offers a lot of affordability. Dell Webb's not the most expensive builder in the world, but they, um, they're also not the cheapest. And Madame e, shown with this history of Renaissance and Sunstone, it usually is a more affordable option. So a paired villa or a single family in here could be incredible. And then you have two different large resort style pools, including a lap pool. You have clubhouse, cafe, bar, kitchen. You have eight pickleball courts, including a private stadium court, not shared to the public, a mix like just a campus inspired community driven realm. I think it's perfect for the area. There's nothing like it. And there's going to be more that comes behind it, but not yet. And therein lies the opportunity. So number one on my list is called Brightmore by Madame Homes. OK, we've talked number one for new. Now let's talk number one for resale communities, or resale mostly. And I'm going with Lake House Cove by Homes by Town plus Friends in the Waterside District. And the reason a quick catch up I'm going with this is let's say you were shopping two and a half years ago and you went to Waterside and Lakewood Ranch. Everybody loved it. Large water, large lakes. And you looked at what was available to you. Well, you had Shoreview by Pulte Homes. I mean, it was like 240 homes. It was interesting because I think at that time they were the fir like for the amount of land they owned. And, and Shoreview still might be one of the best locations in all of Lakewood Ranch. They got an unbelievable piece of land. But it was small. It was Pulte. So it was selling a luxury version of Pulte that people weren't used to, especially if you're out of state. They typically aren't building $1.5 million homes. So that was a little jarring for people. But people loved the land and they were like, it's cool because it's in such a good spot. I'm doing it. Well, then you had Windward with uh, Neil Communities, which was a regular. And that's where a lot of the family and affordability came because versus the other two. And then, and then third one was this one. It was Lake House Cove. And it was a gem because it was Homes by Town was the master developer of it. And Homes by Town was likened to a Toll Brothers, basically, to me. It's about as high end as you can get and elegant if you're not going to go custom. Custom's not for everybody. But then they added a layer of custom to the neighbor in case you wanted it or you wanted to be in a neighborhood that had it for the variety. And you had Arthur Ruttenberg, Lee Weatherington, and uh, John Cannon. It won in a lot of facets. It won on the housing and the models. The outrigger was great. People loved the Thailand, uh, the Weatherly. Um, it was nine. It was like 800, 900 to 1.2. They sold this uh, like smaller empty nester home that was like, you know, 14, 1500 square feet, but had like three car garages and was like felt way more high end versus like people paring down villas in a lot of communities. And people loved it. It was so easy to position and also amenities. You know, Windward had normal family amenities, but a lot of people thought it was going to be very family friendly. 
So if that wasn't for you, that's not for you. Shore, shore views of entities, honestly, were really anticlimactic. And then, uh, and then Homes by Town comes out with, uh, with Lake House Cove and has a gym that overlooks the lake and a long green space and a recreation center. They have a boathouse where you can put paddle boards and kayaks. Um, the, the spa overlooked the large water. They were the only ones that people were talking about three years ago about getting the water taxi that went to downtown Waterside Place. This was before all that was a thing. Well, then like people forget because one, this becomes more expensive because the people that got on really early in like exit when it's, you know, the market's crazy. And then they build like eight, nine communities behind it. They build Wild Blue, which is a more luxurious offering. Pulte launches a second one called Avanti. Alcove comes in with Neil's signature. You have Emerald Landing with David Weekly. You have Nautique with MI Homes. Uh, John Cannon Estates. And you go, you know, keep going, right? And now it's one of seven, eight, nine communities. But that's where the value swings back for me. Because all those other communities don't satiate what Homes by Town has. A lot of them are, are no or uh, low amenity. Um, some are more affordable. Some are townhome heavy. They really, what they did is now the master plan of it is they're trying to satiate all the different demographic needs with different neighborhoods. So they're all positioned a little different from each other. So the collective of them is really interesting. But Lake House Cove then sits with these larger single families that aren't crazy priced compared to Wild Blue or the Custom. They have these small empty nester houses that I mentioned on these like 40, these 35, 40, 45 foot wide plats that now kind of sneakily compete with, you know, nautique like townhomes and uh, the small villas in Avanti and the small villas that still remain that got to a real premium price point at Windward. And I think that if you take a second look at this community, I think it has a ton, a ton of value. There's enough homes to go around. Even people that are selling now that are going to make a lot of money, it still has relative value to the market for you buying as well. And in a normal market now, I think it's 100% worth the second look. And what's going to happen next is only going to help that value. Okay, my second community, number two, when it comes to the new construction, is on the back of what I just spoke about. And that is Homes by Town's newest offering that there's not a lot of information on the internet about it, but it's called Shellstone. It's also going to be in Waterside and it's master planned by Homes by Town. So think about the value I just explained um, and have similar but newer models, Homes by Town. It's a different location, probably upgraded amenities. I would guess price point here is gonna start like really all in around that million dollar mark, which would make sense. But that's what they were selling at three years ago too. So that's not terrible. And location is going to be interesting. So what you have here, I'll try to show on a map. I don't have one in front of me. But what you have here is most of uh, Waterside was built on Lorraine Road runs north to south, right? Just like Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, just like the interstate. So um, you had uh, all of Waterside really built on one side of Lorraine. They were all hugging just north to south. Well, Wild Blue was the first one that went on the other side of Lorraine. So again, it's just across the street. But there's also big water on that side that you couldn't see. It's below Libby's, below the Isles, but above Fruitville. And uh, Wild Blue is already a thing, right? I think 500 homes. It's uh, really interesting. It's luxurious, but it's interesting. It's like if you, the Lake Club doesn't work. This would be the closest to it, but probably higher end eventually with the amenities. And you have stock development, Lake Club. Um, you have John Cannon. You have Lee Weatherington. Same guys, right? Arthur Ruttenberg. And you also have uh, Anchor, which is surprising, but really wide lots. Well, it's on a big lake with, it's going to have unbelievable luxury condo level amenities. Well, the under it on the same lake is Shellstone. So that's what's going to be interesting. It's uh, So you could take the Homes by Town concept and you could say, okay, if I could buy both and all was even, what should I hedge my bets upon? But you can probably use the Homes by Town Lake House Cove as a good example of an education process for what this is going to be and then use a little bit of Wild Blue's juxtaposition. This gets a little closer to Fruitville. It's gonna be an interesting offering. So keep Shellstone, Homes by Town in Waterside and Lakewood Ranch, mouthful, on your radar. Okay, my second community on this side when it comes to resales, I'm going old school locals, local Sarasota opinion, and I'm gonna go with Misty Creek. I'm not sure if you've heard of Misty Creek, but it is a great example of one of the fa my favorite parts of this area in, in totality, and the community itself is special on its own outright. So Missy Creek is located below Argus Street, above Grand Park, central Sarasota, parallel to the Siesta Key area. So that area is very important because uh, you have access to everything. You go slightly north on DeBrecken and Palmer, great way to get there, uh, to uh, Waterside and all that Lakewood Ranch has to offer, even Fruitville Commons. You go south, it's Venice. The important part here is you go west and you have beaches, downtown Sarasota. And that's where a lot of the other real master plan stuff start to get a little dicey. 
But Misty Creek itself, just over 300 homes. You have a beautiful golf course, but not required golf. And this is where you're going to get the lower HOA, old school, larger lots, spread out wide, old school Sarasota, Florida homes before the times when they just basically platted them in. This isn't 15 feet from your neighbors. It's going to be spread out. Now, the challenge here is the renovation of the home, the age of when it was built, like what the previous owner did, like any resale conversation. But the more and more development gets wild in Sarasota Manatee counties, the more and more I believe that going slightly east of I-75 and being south of University and north of exit 200, the Venice exit, um, is only going to get better because you can't replicate um, geography. All right, on to number three when it comes to new communities, and this is a 10 birds, one stone situation. I'm going with a community called Vistera. That's a mixed builder community in North Venice, Florida. So on the surface level, Vistera adds new master plan, three builders. So you can pick between MI Homes, David Weekly is going down there, and Neil. And Neil is also the land developer. So that's great. Normal amenities as well. So you're going to have resort style pool, fitness center, club, kind of the normal things you'd expect. Um, beyond that, affordability and uniqueness of home variety. So a lot to satiate. Most people's needs, you know, you go from the 40-ish foot front planes, carriage style, like rear garages in a lot of these, which is cool. And then you go up to like the 60-something foot, so you can get that 2,900, 3,100 square foot on a single story that looks pleasant, has a large patio, that kind of thing. That's all normal. That's stuff that Sarasota kind of has now, but it's where they put it that I find real special. So I've been beating this drum for the last couple months kind of hard now, and this is in North Venice parallel to Nokomis. And if you look at the two gaps we have right now in the market, is people start in Lakewood Ranch, they go down to Welland Park, new master plan, new master plan. On fringes, it's the in-between that's the gap right now. In between those two, you had Palmer Ranch, old school, but central Sarasota, east, and north of Venice, south of Sarasota, kind of a gap. Spotty construction, right? Artistry, Sky Ranch, Grand Park, Promenade Estate sneaks in there. In Venice, you have Aria, Vincenza, CeeLo, uh, Tuscana Isles, Talent Preserve, unrelated to each other though. But what's happening now is this one's going in that area and you start to combine this thing, you stretch east to west. How is this not Palmer Ranch to the south? It's the same thing, right? So then they're going to add the communal amenities that people leave their neighborhoods to attend. They're going to add a lagoon there. I heard there's another 55 and upcoming there. When that's all combined, right, you snuck backwards into a Lakewood Ranch. It just didn't feel as intentional because there wasn't you know, a lakewoodranch.com that you could go to and lay this thing out because they were done in silos because of the land arrangements. But I think getting in this area is an incredible thing to look at, right? Because you go south, one, you're you're closer to the water innately if you're in this part of the state. It gets narrow, but you got Nokomis Beach with a boardwalk right there. You got Venice Island, downtown Venice, has Venice Beach, Casperson, Shark's Tooth Capital of the World, and Brohard Beach, the only dog beach in the county. You go slightly North, you have Casey Key, the bottom of Siesta Key, which has three beaches on it, Crescent, Turtle, Siesta Key. Uh, downtown Sarasota is not that far. And then, you know, you're probably 35 minutes one way to Waterside and all that Lakewood Ranch has to offer. And when then Sarasota's built out more, they're going to put stuff east of the interstate there too. So you're going to have everything you need. You're going to not have to be like, I'm down in Venice because it's cheaper than Sarasota, but I go to Sarasota all the time. You're going to have a Costco. You're going to have hospitals that are already there. You're going to have work, live, play. And uh, that can all exist where this neighborhood exists. And I think this is just the uh, tip of the iceberg. Okay, now number three on the resale community side, we're gonna go back to Lakewood Ranch and talk about a community that gives you kind of the best of the original school and the best of the new school. And that's Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club. There's a couple things going on here, but one is when Lakewood Ranch was originally built, they had Summerfield, Greenbrook, State Road 70. They had uh, the River Club, and uh, downtown Lakewood Ranch, uh, these shopping centers that were built upon university, it was all in the area where the neighborhoods were. The Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club was in that conversation. They started building in 1995, and a lot was built from 95 to 2005, and they were all built in these, these particular areas. Well, when they added new development, for the most part, they did not go north. They went south, and they went west. So Waterside was added below university. So right, that's a commonality, University Parkway. And then and University Parkway is in northern Fruitville. So you got to go east to west to get to town. Can't go north to south to it. So, and then University Town Center with the Bendersons development also went on university, hence the name. Center Point, the new development also where Owens Fish Camp went, also on university. 
So Lake Orange Golf and Country Club sits in an area that spans from University and then Lake Orange Boulevard, Lorraine Road, and they could shoot slightly north to downtown Lake Orange, the original, down to Waterside, south, uh, over to UTC. They put a Libby's on the corner. There's Publix every time you turn around. And it just fell backwards into an amazing location that combined what originally was the plan and what the new plan added to it. And it's hard to replicate. The reason you'd end up here instead of the Lake Club or the Isles or one of these surrounding communities is three golf courses, two clubhouses, tons of social membership options, and um, it gives you variety. And if you're a golfer, especially, um, and they're all the three golf courses inside are private and there's one on the outside that's public. But if you're a golfer, um, you don't have a 400 options there. You have Esplanade Golf and Country Club by Taylor Morrison, the original, not Azario, north. You have Esplanade Azario right next to it, north, which is new construction. Um, both have single golf courses. Lakewood National has two golf courses, but that was um, that was Lennar who built it. And it's very different kind of golf courses are beautiful. Very different kind of build than is in here. Rosedale, uh, optional golf, Terra. There's not a ton of ton of options. So this one really falls into like uh, quality builds. They were the original guys, Arthur Ruttenberg, Lee Weatherington, John Cannon, all those original luxury builders. It's just their 20 year old version of it. But I think, again, this is becoming more of a geography conversation. They can always go north. They can always go south. They can always go east. But you can't always be in an area that has access to everything but the beach. And this happens to be one of those. Okay, my fourth community when it comes to the new construction side, we're going back down to Venice in Welland Park and it's a community called Everly. And the reason I put this on my list amongst the many reasons you could is because it solves another very important need that this area did not solve well until right now. And that is luxury. They solved 55 and up with Brightmoor, but this is luxury. And out of the president's mouth himself of Welland Park said this is the very first mixed builder community featuring luxury custom home builders that Welland Park has. And that's exactly what it is. So if you went three years ago, the only the most luxurious builder you could pick from was probably uh, beyond the Sam Rogers like sneaking in there. It was uh, it was Neil. It was Neil and the Pared Down Toll Brothers. It was the nice Neil, not even Neil Signature, and the Pared Down Toll Brothers. And a lot of people's stance were that um, that people went to that Welland Park primarily because it was cheaper than Waterside. That's how a lot of people thought about it. But what about the fact that you just want to be there? What if you have one point eight million dollars and you want to be? in an area that offers what Venice offers, which is a lot that Waterside can't do. Every community in there is 18 minutes or less to the beach. It's a lot more docile. It's a lot smaller than Lakewood Ranch. It's a lot more slower paced. It's very coastal feeling. You can almost feel the breeze in downtown Welland. And it's extremely walkable, which many areas in Florida are not. And you have as much golf cart friendliness here as you have in the villages. But you want a custom house. Well, now you can do it. So you have a 50 acre lake that Everly's going in. It's a gated community and it's gonna feature you know, the old school guys, Arthur Ruttenberg, Lee Weatherington, John Cannon, and then Homes by West Bay, interesting addition as well. Uh, large lots, um, multiple floor plans to pick from, lovely amenities, access to pickleball, and access to a chip and putt facility, which is interesting. Um, but that's what it does here. It's everything Welland Park offers in a more luxurious fashion. It's going to come at a premium, but in perspective to the double counties of what it typically has come at, I think the water is going to be cheaper. The options of lots, as far as all the lots aren't designated to exact builders that pre-purchase them, it's going to be more pick my lot, pick my builder community. And some other cool things along those lines. So if that sounds like you, Everly is a good one to look at. Okay, my fourth option when it comes to resales, I want to go another unique old school one, and that's a community called The Lakes. This might have not been on your radar if you're from out of state either, but this is the same idea of central proximity, old school Sarasota. 190-ish homes, uh, 2,000 to 4,000 square feet. This is the old school, um, large, sprawling, single families. You can get up to like a half acre here, I think, on most. There's villas. There's a couple different sections of it, enclaves of it. But it's directly parallel to um, the Siesta Key, downtown Sarasota area. So up to Fruitville Commons and Waterside Place, down to Venice, over to um, Siesta Key, Lido, downtown Sarasota, all that area has to offer. And uh, just a good one to research in a conversation of juxtaposition against the same new construction in central Sarasota. If you feel like it's too much of a stretch for you to go too far south to Venice or too far north to Lake Ranch. Okay, my fifth and final one when it comes to new construction in Sarasota for 2024, I'm going with the tried and true of Esplanade Azario by Taylor Morrison in Northeast Lake Ranch. 
this is one that uh, still to this day, there's not been a bunch of stuff that come behind it that I thought devalued it. I, granted, they got very hairy in pricing of all the models compared to what they were in 2020. Some rightfully so, some little, you know, little, little bit of a stretch. But they've swung back to more normal than they were, and it still doesn't take away the gem of this community always was. All the favor it was in originally, it was for a reason. Some of the best amenities in both counties combined, unbelievable aesthetic to the community. It is beautiful end to end. 1,500 homes, half deeded golf, half not, beautiful golf course. And it's a place you don't really need to leave. It's got multiple pools. It has pickleball. It's got everything you need. And if you like new construction right now, and let's talk about models for a second, just to park that. Um, if you're going to build from... 20, I've said this a bunch of times in the past. If you're going to build from 2250 square feet to 3100, Taylor Morrison has some of the most elegant floor plans I've ever seen for the price point. The way the Lazio, some like the Farnese, but the, more the way the Lazio to me and the way the Palazio are oriented, it's the perfect use of space for a four bedroom, two and a half bath with a loft or with a, um, a large office. Uh, the back patios, they sit on 62 foot plats. So with the extensions and everything, you have these beautiful, but like just perfectly sized for the price homes if you don't want to do custom. It's still true, right? And you catch a resale that's a Lincoln or a Beacon. Um, really interesting value. They have some of the most unbelievable views and lots in this place because of the golf course, which adds to... The golf course just helps where, even if you're not a golfer, uh, there's not as much room to back into your neighbor or any of that nonsense. So you can overlook both fairways and parts of golf courses and that in addition to lakes versus a community that only has lakes. I still think Esplanade Azaria is in there. I would take a second look at it. Now you got to navigate it. It has to make sense for you. Your neighbor community of Esplanade Country Club, which was the original, is another option for you as well. But if you want new golf right now, I don't know what else you do. I mean, you could go Wellen Park Golf and Country Club that's in Venice, but that's Lenar. Lakewood National is done. There was supposed to be another Lakewood National golf course that was like a junior, but I heard Shades of Grey that might not be released. But there's just not a ton of options in Lakewood for new construction and golf in totality. Um, so I think this one should be on the list. Okay, our fifth and final one when it comes to resale communities and our 10th and final one when it comes to our 2024 list is a community that encapsulates everything that makes everything about this list special in history. And it's called Cherokee Park. We're talking not just individual value. We're talking overall value to the state, to the country, to the world. Sarasota historically was constructed in, an, in a way where all the value existed in one area. And that's what made John Ringling want to be here, all his friends want to be here. And it was all the stuff that's special. It's the urban districts, the beaches, the bay, the coast, what makes the geography, old school real estate special. And when you're in Sarasota, all the value in the whole town was constructed off of how close you were to the stuff. And the good thing about this area is once you go west, you got everything because west is water. So downtown is three miles one way from Lido Beach, which is uh, next to St. Armand Circle, which is a really high-end cosmopolitan shopping district, which is just below uh, Longboat Key, seven mile long, world-class beach, just below eventually Anna Marie Island. And then south of that area is Siesta Key, which is on everybody's radar. Also seven, eight miles long, has three beaches on it. All the value really clusters on the north side of the island because those two other beaches, a lot of people don't aren't even aware of them. But the Siesta Key Village, the shopping district, the second one, and Siesta Key, the main beach of how everybody thinks about it with the quartz white sand, doesn't get hot to the touch. It's all north on the island. Well, and then downtown is inland. So the thing about these coasts is they're barrier islands. You're either on the beach or you're not. And if you're on the beach or you're not, they're both a commitment in their own outright. You got to be on one and go to the other. If you're on the beach, it's a commitment. It's awesome, but it's a commitment. You're there. When you're there, you're there. The interesting thing about barrier islands where a lot of times, because it's beach to bay, gulf to bay. You have land in between them. So there is a strip of land that is in between downtown and the beaches. You're not on either. You look to the right downtown, you look to the left, you're on the beaches. And and then there's also an area in that land, as I digress here, that it has the perfect access to the functionality of it. It's not close to water, it's close to functional water. If you're not near the bridge, but you're near the water, how do you get to it? You know, unless you're on it, unless you live on the, like you have like hydraulic lift in a boat or any of that, right? So you need access. Like, how do you actually get there? And there is a very special part that's in the middle of this area I call a magical triangle, where you have, you're the furthest you can get to the water without being on it, inland in residential neighborhoods. And it's called West of the Trail, but not just West of the Trail. It's West of the Trail, south of, south of Lido Beach, north of Siesta Key. 
And that's where Cherokee Park exists, right? Stones throw to downtown, like less than a mile. You shoot up your Alito Beach, you have all that shopping and Longboat Key, and you shoot down your Siesta Key, and you're right next to all the bridges. And the magic of all of that is that's not high-rise condos. These are old school, large, non-HOA lots that people have built homes on. You have these old school, charming, kind of like higher end version of uh, St. Pete neighborhoods. Amazing school district with Southside with access to everything you could want, right? So it it it's just like value. It's hard to describe for me. It's hard to articulate, but I can't harp it enough of like, if you had to put one spot on a map in Florida, this is right up there. And then Cherokee Park's a gem. Beautiful, really wide streets, brick, beautiful homes. It falls into the water and you could throw McClellan Park and Bayview in that conversation as well. I think Granada is kind of underrated as well. But that's right. Some of uh, Cherokee Park, obviously, you don't say all of this and it comes at a discount. But if you could navigate that and you could look at that, then I think that's an amazing representation of uh, why everyone falls in love with Sarasota, Florida. All right, my friends, that's a wrap for my 10 favorite neighborhoods for 2024 from what I know now. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Adam Hinnicock. If you don't know me, if you enjoyed the video at all, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not. Uh, we're going to put out more value than I've ever done, I think, in 2024. I really want to help you guys navigate this market the best I can. Um, as well as that, if you haven't downloaded the 2024 updated Flipbook digital guide, it's completely free to Sarasota Manatee County. Make sure you get your hands on that. We'll have links everywhere. Um, if my team can help you buy, sell, and or investing, even a conversation around the entire state of Florida, but especially Sarasota Manatee counties, please consider reaching out. Really unique team. We have the experts of the experts in every little category. People from here like me, people that love downtown, people that have live and breathe Lake Ranch have done everything you want to do three years before you, we can match it perfectly. We probably have someone on our team that is coming from your town, um, regardless of where you move, that's on our team now that already did it. So we really try to match make it. It's a special, special organization. So please consider reaching out if that's applicable to you. And anything else I can do for you, we would love to assist. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We'll see you on the next one.